We're out here in beautiful Southern California. We're talking to real brothers and sisters, following them on their journey to Islam, how they discovered it, and what made them embrace becoming a Muslim. The topic today is Hispanics in Islam. One of the fastest growing groups embracing Islam at an alarming rate. But the question is why? And to answer that question, we must go back in history. And there you find out that in the Middle Ages, Spain was ruled by Muslims for over 800 years. Not to mention, there are over 4,000 Arabic words in the Spanish language. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk to our brothers and sisters, Brother Hector and Sister Diane, and we're going to find out what was their journey to Islam. Brother Hector. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum Islam. Tell me a little bit about your religious background growing up. I, I was born in, in uh, Honduras. Okay. Uh, I was raised Catholic. Um, and uh, they were, you know, they, they were practicing. We would go to church every so often. Uh, we're brought up to believe in uh, Jesus, peace mm -hmm. be upon him, mm -hmm. uh, and all the other prophets as well, from uh, Adam, Noah, uh, Moses, all of the prophets, peace be upon them all. Mm -hmm. You shared to me that um, when you were brought up, you weren't brought up with the notion that Jesus was God. Right. In Catholicism, you, you are taught that uh, Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, is God. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in my own personal family, though, we weren't really brought up that way. We were brought up uh, to believe in, in Jesus, mm -hmm. peace be upon him, uh, that he was a great man, you know, uh, that he came to the people and he uh, preached the, the oneness of God. Okay. And, you know, we, we loved him, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He was a great man. He was to be loved. Uh, respected and everything, mm -hmm. uh, but that was pretty much the extent of it, you know, just uh, the same as uh, all the other prophets. Now tell me about uh, how you came across Islam. Uh, I was actually introduced to it at work uh, okay. by a, a sister, and I after that I did my own research as well, Okay. and I found that um, pretty much what Islam taught was what I already believed myself. You know, it was in line with my own teachings growing up. Okay. Believe in one God, yep. believe in all his prophets and messengers, mm -hmm. his books, mm -hmm. his angels, you know? Mm -hmm. I already knew this, you know? Yeah. So, of course, it, it was simple for me to say, you know what, this is my religion. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what I was taught growing up. Exactly. So, I decided to become Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Oh, okay. Alhamdulillah. What point of your understanding brought you to that point of taking the Shahada? Like, what, what tipped you over? One thing I told myself when I was learning about it was, okay, I can't, I can't believe in this if it doesn't include Jesus, you know? Yep. Jesus, a lot peace of be people, upon him, yeah. was, you know, this great man, you know? Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. This, this prophet, peace be upon him, uh, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mm -hmm. brought this message, but where's Jesus in all of this? You know, that, <laughs> exactly. that's, that's what I was thinking, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I did a bit more research. I saw that, you know, Jesus is there too, you know? Yeah. Um, and so... I said, you know, no, this is it. Okay. You know, this is it. I have You're to accept take it. your shahada. Yeah. yeah. So the the following day was Friday. So I went to the khutbah. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the khutbah. And then I, I told someone, you know, I want to take shahada. Mm -hmm. I want to take shahada. Mm -hmm. uh, I took my shahada and then everyone rushed me. You yeah, know, for yeah. the hugs, the congratulations, all of that. Mm -hmm. I, w I had never seen someone take shahada. So mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting this. You know, yeah. all this group of people thanking me. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, um, congratulating me and, and everything. You know, mm -hmm. it's surprising. You know, mm -hmm. it was a great mm -hmm. feeling. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Excellent story, Brother Hector. Appreciate you sharing that with us. Sister Diane, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Tell us a little bit about your life before you accept, accepted Islam. We moved to South Central Los Angeles okay. and um, the demographics were very different from what they are currently. There, it was predominantly African American. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, you know, I went to school, uh, aside from a normal child school issues and things of life, um, uh, I was surrounded by some adults that were, you know, drug abusers and... Mm. Um, Heroin addict, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we grew up Catholic by tradition. Okay. And uh, as I uh, mentioned, um, going into the confessional, mm -hmm. having to confess your sins as a seven-year-old, mm -hmm. uh, what could you possibly do at that age that would be so <laughs> horrific? Um, my sin at that age was sticking bubble gum under my grandparents' coffee table. That's what I confessed <laughs> to. <laughs> And uh, them telling me, you know, say 10 Our Fathers, 25 Hail Marys, 
mm -hmm. and go put a quarter in the donation box. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the conditioning. I, I, again, I remember being in junior high school and uh, giving the assignment by the teacher to uh, do a biography of Prophet Muhammad, mm -hmm. peace and blessings be upon him. Wow. And uh, I remember going to the library, you know, as a kid and, and getting all these encyclopedias and, and these books on him. Mm -hmm. I got an A plus for the presentation. Yeah. But it wasn't my time yet. It didn't click. Yeah. Uh, I just viewed him as a, a person to be respected, a mm -hmm. historical figure. I had no doubt in his existence mm -hmm. whatsoever. Alhamdulillah. Then, you know, going to college, uh, mm -hmm. now you're really... Uh, having intellectual interchanges with other people, exactly. encounters, and mm -hmm. you're trying to expand your horizons in terms of what you see in the world, your observations, their observations. Mm -hmm. And um, between classes, I, I met some Muslim brothers. Okay. Uh, the topic of conversation went to religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they asked me what was. I said, well, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know, as that question that I will never forget, you know, why do you worship Jesus? Why not worship the one that created Jesus? Exactly, yes. And uh, as I said, I would go home frustrated. I would be mm -hmm. like, what's the comeback to these guys? Yeah. Because if I'm standing on truth, I can refute anyone, right? Exactly, yeah. Truth abolishes falsehood, exactly. you know, it extinguishes it, you know. And uh, I just, the more I tried to refute it, the more unsettled my heart was with mm -hmm. my belief. Mm -hmm. And I believe that where there's doubt, there's not faith. So it got to the point where you know, I said to myself, Dan, you have to make a proper decision. Mm. Because I know having anything in this dunya or nothing of this dunya, this world, mm -hmm. um, we, we have a soul. This body encases a soul. Yes, indeed. And yeah. this decision, you know, may result in a lot of people not liking Diane. Yeah. yeah. And then I had to think, you know, uh, the reality is not everyone will like you. Yeah. Why are you tall? Why are you fat? Why mm -hmm. are you short? Why this? Why that? Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, let me strive to please my Lord. Yes. And whoever loves me will love me. That's and whoever true. doesn't have a nice day. Mm -hmm. It is really that simple. But mm -hmm. we tend to complicate things as humans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So pondering that, the next day I uh, encountered those brothers again. And I said, uh, I, I need to embrace this religion. Yeah. So they told me how to say the testification of faith, you know, okay. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah mm -hmm. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I went home, went to bed that night. I didn't know anything. I didn't know tahara and salat, siyam, mm -hmm. zakah. I didn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. But I knew and I accepted and I affirmed and I testified to the oneness of the Creator. Alhamdulillah. And I said, Ya yeah. Allah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, Ya Allah, if I die tonight, you know that I died loving you and wanting to worship you and you alone because only you are worthy of that worship. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I laid down and I slept. Wow. And when I woke up that morning, I said, Alhamdulillah, He gave me another day. Mm -hmm. And literally, I take it like that day by day. Alhamdulillah. That, it's been 30 years, 1984. Wow. Wow. Now, of course, the goodness you have, uh, you want to spread it towards others. I started visiting my family home. Okay. Uh, you know, taking some cinnamon, cinnamon rolls, having your Sunday coffee, and mm -hmm. bringing up the topic of religion. Mm -hmm. uh, I started presenting Islam in the way in a natural way, the way I speak, as mm -hmm. I've always spoken. Mm -hmm. And one by one, my mom, my dad, my brothers, wow. in their own time, embraced Islam. Wow. How, how many family members would you say embraced Islam? Nine. My grandmother in her 90s embraced Islam. Mm. Wow. Your grandmother in her 90s yes. embraced Islam. And she passed as a Muslim. She was buried as a Muslim. How different is the culture of Islam um, in contrast to the culture that you were brought up with, the Hispanic culture? Um, <clears throat> well, the culture I was brought up with, it's, it's, it's similar to the religion of Islam, um, mm -hmm. just because, you know, um, I have a sister. Okay. And alhamdulillah, like, uh, growing up, my, my father was very protective of her, you know. Okay. Uh, he would tell her, like, no boyfriends, let me not hear you. Anything about a boyfriend <laughs> from you, okay? We were brought up to, to eat with our hands, you know? Okay. Uh, and that's, uh, that's actually one of the sunnahs of the Prophet, uh, yeah. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to eat with his hand, you know? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, but, um, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so it was, it was pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Which is a blessing, alhamdulillah. What about you, Sister Diane? Uh, um, I think that um, a lot of the 
a Hispanic culture kind of um, derived a lot of it from the Islamic That's culture. That's true. That's true. Yeah. For example, importance on the family, respect mm -hmm. for the elders, care for the the young ones. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, preserving your your dignity and mm -hmm. uh, being virtuous. We did value. Uh, time together, like family dinners and mm -hmm. um, visiting relatives was very important. Salat al rahm mm -hmm. you know, keeping that, those family ties are very important. So um, it wasn't that I had to have a great transition from one to the other. I think it just reconciled itself. Okay. I think uh, I do get out of my culture the goodness of it and what is contrary and non-beneficial to me, I just leave it to the wayside. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't mm -hmm. a, a horrible... Uh, struggle in terms of reconciling who I was with Islam. Mm -hmm. I know some Hispanics say, I want to hold on to my heritage, exactly. meaning Catholicism. Yeah. But if you really want to go way back, um, we know Spain was a Muslim country exactly. for seven centuries. Definitely, yeah. So, you know, if you really want to go further back, well, we come from Adam and Eve, and Adam taught the oneness of Allah. The oneness of Allah. So, yes. uh, what I love about Islam is that um, you know, I didn't have to become this uh, person that I'm not. Alhamdulillah. So if you ask me to stand under the flag of Pakistan, I can't. I'm not Pakistani. Exactly. If you ask me to stand under the flag of France, I'm sorry, I'm not French. Mm -hmm. If you ask me to stand under the flag of the U.S., well, you know, mm -hmm. I, have, I have a love, love, love relationship with Uncle Sam, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me to stand under the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, I can, he can, you can, mm -hmm. we all can. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that's mm -hmm. why I try to promote unity amongst the Muslims. Definitely, yeah. Within the Hispanic community, is there a lot of da'wah going on? And exactly what is that da'wah going on inside the actual community? Uh, the, the need is there. Okay. There, is, there, there are people that are active, but I think um, what Hispanics need to understand and realize is that they need to learn in order to teach. Mm. Because if we're going to rely on one teacher, you know, it, it, it's not an intelligent way to approach Dawah. Mm -hmm. So as we are learning, we need to prepare ourselves in order to teach others. That's true. Yes, that's and true. I think that's where we're slightly lacking in mm -hmm. some cases. Mm -hmm. What about you, uh, Brother Hector, what would you say? I think that there is a, um, actually an interest from the people as well, mm -hmm. non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. um, I actually give uh, Dawah to my, uh, to my neighbors mm -hmm. uh, in my apartment complex. A lot of them see me, you know, uh, they see me and, and after engaging me, basically mm -hmm. making sure like it's okay to talk to me and stuff, mm -hmm. they'll they'll approach me and, and ask me what exactly Islam is. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I've had uh, strangely enough people come to me and, and confess things to me. You know, oh wow. Um, but I, I tell them, you know, that I mean that's between you and God. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I I'm, I can't. I, I don't know what you see in me, but I can't actually forgive you for yeah, anything. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. Um, I explain to them what Islam is, mm -hmm. what it is that we do, you mm -hmm. know, when we want to ask for forgiveness, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and I explain to them, like, how easy it is to do that. You mm -hmm. know, just ask your Creator. You mm -hmm. know, ask Allah. Ask Allah. It's, it, it's obvious in, in them, you know, that they, they feel sorry for whatever they did. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I explain to them, just ask God for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, I tell them, you know, it's, it's, God has made it simple for us. Mm -hmm. We know we did something wrong, turn to Him and Him alone. Mm -hmm. I explain to them that uh, He's the only one that can forgive, He's the only one that can protect, you know? Mm -hmm. uh,